In today's video, we're gonna see if we can use seashells and strangely colored corn to make some weird tortillas. Before we jump into the video, I wanted to remind you about the sale we have going on in our shop, as well as new hoodies and sweatpants available. If you haven't checked out the shop lately, you are missing out, so hit the link in the description below to get your gear now. Guys, I am here with Joseph and Joseph from the channel Good and Basic. If you've seen some of our previous videos with them, you know that they come up with some fun ideas that usually have to do with sort of off the grid or post-apocalyptic forms of building, working, cooking, stuff like that. Here's the basic idea. We're teaming up with the YouTube channel Good and Basic to see if we can use some more unusual types of corn combined with the chemicals we get from cooking seashells to make homemade tortillas. Will it work and what will they look like? Tell us about what we've got going on today. I see a bunch of corn. Yep, yeah, so this is corn, but it's not corn like you've seen before. This is not the kind of corn you'll get from the grocery store. There's two things that make it different. The first thing, of course, is that it's blue. This is a variety of corn called Hopi blue corn. So when you buy corn from the grocery store, it's yellow and it's sweet. And what happens is it's been bred to have a high sugar content, and that makes it delicious to boil or to put on the grill and then to eat off the cob. And this is not good to eat off the cob. You would not want to eat this fresh. It actually tastes and kind of has the texture of like peas. It's not very good. What this is for is it's for making tortillas. It's for grinding into flour, and making cornbread and things like that. I have had blue corn chips before. You can buy those mm -hmm. in a lot of grocery stores. Is that what these are made from? Yes. Yep. Another difference with this stuff is that this guy actually grew it in his backyard. And so this is homegrown blue corn and it's, it's unusual in that it's a grain that you can grow reasonably in your backyard. And it looks like we've got quite a bit of this blue corn. We also have some more corn still in the husks, and this is gonna be more of the mostly blue, right? Yes. Maybe with some slight color variety yeah. here and there. So we'll open all of that later and see what other kinds of variety we've got. And we've got some smaller, even more colorful corn down here, and you were saying that this is not the same kind of corn. This isn't the kind that you would mill into corn flour or making tortillas but this is actually a variety of popcorn. Yes, it is. This is a type of corn called flower corn, the blue corn is, and this is a type of popcorn. It's in the, the flint corn sort of family. They tend to have a kind of conical ear, and they're really small. I mean, this is popcorn. You could literally pop this. It doesn't stay that color when you pop it. It turns All right. white. I was assuming that would be like everyone's first question is like, do you get multicolored popcorn? popcorn would you get be super white cool popcorn with a little bit of color on the back. Oh, like husk. on the, the bit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I think that's probably worth trying, but I've heard that it just turns out white. All right. So we might try that. And then we also have our crucible. And our crucible, as you can see, is full of seashells. We cook these in our foundry at about 2,000 degrees for a couple of hours. And we've done this before. Uh, we cook the shells and then we mix them with water. There's a chemical reaction and you get slate to lime, which you can then form bricks or mortar out of, depending on what else you mix into it. And that is also an important ingredient. Yes. Believe it or not, the, the pe same people who invented corn about 8,000 years ago figured out about 6,000 years ago that if you boil corn in that, basically the same ingredient that makes cement into cement, it actually improves the nutrition and flavor and digestibility of the corn and makes it so that the vitamin B is unlocked and also gives the, it the texture that you expect from a tortilla. So this is like the magic ingredient that makes tortillas tortillas. Now we're using seashells here specifically. Are seashells important or? No, no, you can use, typically it's limestone. And if you cook the limestone the same way this is done, and limestone's basically made out of seashells, so I guess it kind of is the same thing. Calcium carbonate is what seashells and eggshells and limestone are kind of all made of. Yep, and that calcium is the key ingredient. Uh, what do you think? Should we shuck the rest of this corn and see what we've got, and then start taking all the grains off of the cob? Yep, yep. sounds like the thing to do. So just looking at these, we do have some variety. It's all blue-ish, -ish, yeah. but some of them we've got like blue with some green and yellow bits in it. This one clearly got blue with some very pink purplish bits in it. This whole cob is a little purplier. This is like got some lighter blue. Do you know what makes the difference? Yes, this is actually one of the really, really cool things about growing your own corn is every single one of these corn kernels was pollinated independently. Which means, and one of the crazy things is, there's independent color for the inside and for the very outermost layer. And the very outermost layer takes after the pollen, which means that you can identify by color 
which one was pollinated by which other plant in the garden. Which means that crossbreeding your corn and choosing what genetics you want to pass forward is really, really easy. And considering it's one of the most genetically diverse crop plants on the planet, you can breed for height and size and color and taste and texture and how well it pops when you're trying to make popcorn and you can make custom popcorn within a few years. If you let the corn dry, it's a lot easier. If it's fresh corn, then, well, it's not very easy. And then eventually you can just start rubbing it. One of the crazy things about storing corn long-term is it actually stores better on the cob. It holds it at the right moisture level and it's better if you're saving it for seed. And so really, you could just store it like this and just uh, shell off the amount that you're going to use for a particular meal. All right, so the green and the red, we do just want to grind. Yep, let's we'll throw that in the blender. All right, yeah, we're gonna use our very old-fashioned grinder, which is a blend tech. Ooh, it's reacting really well with at least one piece. Yeah, this right there. That one, for whatever reason, is really starting to react quickly. There we go. I put in about a tablespoon of slaked lime per cup of corn. All right, so now it starts cooking and the texture. You see that? You see how instant the color changes? So we're gonna let this go up to a boil and then stop. And typically what you'll do is you'll leave it overnight, but we're gonna cheat and use it a little bit sooner than that. While this is doing its thing, do we want to do what we're gonna do with our colored flowers? Yes. Now for these, are they just getting Water and cooking? Water and cooking. Water and cooking. Water and, and cooking. Pull that off. Basically, um, make it into a batter. Or you can right. like form it into a tortilla if you want. So, I, I, there is one other thing I wanted to try. We have our green is more yellow, I think. Uh huh. Um, and our red is a decent pink with a slight purple tint. But I do want to try mixing a little of both and seeing if we can get an orange color just for a little variety. Yeah, yeah. You know, color theory with corn dust. <laughs> Orange or brown, what do we think? Well, if you asked me, if you just held this up and said, what color is this? I gotta say, I would not go straight to orange. That's way more purpley than I would have expected. Going for yellow green. Yeah, that looks like a whole brand or something. Brand flower. So, especially as you mix the water, it's looking more brown and less orange. Yep. Right, so now do we just want to throw these in a frying pan and see how they cook up? Let's do it. Plan? That sounds great. I'm gonna start with our purple, pink, little light spray of authentic Native American cooking oil. So this is some treated corn flour that I prepared ahead of time. This is going to have a very different flavor from the, uh, the plain corn that hasn't been treated with lime. So we're going to try to make a hoe cake type thing there instead of a tortilla. We've cooked things. Yes, we've we're cooked going to eat things. several things, and I gotta say, I'm delighted at the variety of colors we've got. The popcorn, I tasted this, it's smaller. You can clearly see we've got smaller kernels than you're gonna get at most movie theaters or even pop at home, but the taste is pretty much just exactly the same. I don't eat a lot of unflavored popcorn, so it's not really standing out, but to me, it's popcorn. You give it to me, I'd say it's popcorn, and say, is there anything weird? And I'd say, nope.
Yeah, one of the things we talked about while we're cooking it is that modern popcorn is actually bred to pop into a large uh, into, into a large shape, and the reason for that is, well, you know, when you eat popcorn, you want the butter flavor, you want the salt flavor, you don't want the popcorn flavor, you just want the texture of something crunchy in your mouth. All right, let's take a look at the other things we made. So we've got our three tortillas. We were going for green, red, and orange. What we got is slightly greenish yellow. As for red, I mean, we have this purplish Fantastic. color. It's really it's, red. Yeah, really brought out the color pretty well. I'm gonna give this a taste if you guys want to as well. That has very little flavor at first. And as you're chewing it, more comes out. I don't love it. I mean, it's a grain, right? Like, but it does taste like a corn tortilla. Yeah. All right, just in case the uh, orange one's any different, which it won't be. Orange. Look at that orange color. It looks like we just used whole grain and made a tiny little patty out of it. Hmm. I mean, I it's definitely food, just exactly the same. Like, I don't know if I'm imagining it, but I like the texture better. These have been made from the processed corn, so it's been. So the steps, we had the corn, we took the corn off the cob, we boiled the corn in the calcium hydroxide solution, we dried the corn, we ground the corn down into flour, and then we made it into a pancake. So the only difference between tortilla. this and that tortilla is that this has had, um, it's been ground in. So this was fully processed and that one, is also, that the same? Also okay. fully processed. Okay. I get it, yeah, like that's the flavor of tortilla, like the texture is not quite right. We didn't make the nice little balls with, you know, a little bit of salt and oil and then like press them. We made it into more of a batter, but that flavor is different. And I wouldn't have known what I was tasting before. I wouldn't have, like eating that, I didn't say, you know what it's missing is that slight, honestly, it's Limestone. almost like, yeah, it's almost like a dirt flavor. <laughs> but it's not, I don't know, it's not But dirt. like really good dirt flavor. Um, but like, yeah, the, the hype is real. You want. Like this stuff is actually super good. Guys, thank you so much. I learned a lot about corn. I learned a lot about ways to prepare corn. Just one more last thing. What would native people have done rather than kiln firing seashells? We're gonna try that over on our channel in just a little bit. All right, guys. Well, if you wanna see that, you're gonna have to go watch Joseph and Joseph over on Good and Basic. I might make a quick little guest appearance. I think we'll just film a little bit of it here and then you get to watch them finish it off. Guys, that's not all. We've always got more for you to see. Click that box up at the top to check out our most recent video, and we'll see you in the next one. Talk to you then.